In this module, we're going to talk about nomenclature, at least the first part of it. We'll break it up into two parts here. And we're going to talk about how to name elements, monatomic ions, and ionic compounds. Well, nomenclature means naming. We're going to name um, chemical compounds. And we're going to look at it from two ways. We're going to look at a formula and learn to say its name. And then we're going to look at a name, a written name, and learn to write its formula from that. <clears throat> so first of all, um, there originally was the what's called the common naming system, and there was no rhyme or reason to this. People just made up names for molecules, pretty much, and that got real cumbersome because there are literally millions of chemical compounds, and it's essentially impossible to memorize all of those. Um, there are some carryovers. The only two that I'm asking you guys to memorize are water, which almost everybody knows, H2O, and ammonia, NH3. Memorize these. But we're going to use the systematic naming system, starting out by the elements, which is pretty easy because most periodic tables have the names of the elements on them. And if not, you, you'll learn them real quickly just by because we use them so much in this class. Uh, the formulas for the elements are just the symbols um, for those elements that are in the periodic table. There are several exceptions that you need to memorize. Um, those exceptions are hydrogen, oxygen, fluorine, bromine, iodine, nitrogen, chlorine, and then sulfur and phosphorus. Um, this is a, a little mnemonic device that I learned that maybe helps you remember it, to remember the these guys. Hofbrinkel, it's a nonsense word, right? But for some reason, it's easy to remember. And this lists what we call the seven diatomic elements. These seven elements here that are in this nonsense word, Hofbrinkel, their formula is with two of the atoms attached to each other. So for instance, when you say hydrogen, it really means H two, not just H. Um, iodine means I2, and so on. If we want to say just a single atom of hydrogen, we would say atomic hydrogen or atomic iodine. Now, sulfur and phosphorus, um, the real formula for elemental sulfur is S8. Phosphorus is P4. These you just have to memorize. <clears throat> So this is a periodic table, one you'll see a lot. Most This appears on most exams. And as you can see in this one, the names, the elements are beneath the symbols and the average atomic masses. So how to name ions. We're going to start with cations. Monatomic means just a single atom. Um, and cations means that it has a positive charge. So all you have to do to say the name of a monatomic cation is just say the name of the element that it came from and then use a Roman numeral to say what the charge is. For instance, copper with a plus two charge is called copper two. We just say it two, copper two. Iron with a positive three charge would be iron three. Now, where these are going to mostly appear for you guys are inside of ionic compounds. They're gonna com be combined with an anion. And the, you're gonna be able to figure out what the charges are on these cations by using what's called charge neutrality, which we'll get to in just a minute. So remember, cations need Roman numerals, except there are some that you're not allowed to use Roman numerals for. Um, these are what the difference is that these elements that I'm showing you here, these metals, remember metals are to the left of the staircase. So all the metals here that you see that I've written the symbols for with their charges are cations when they're combined in an ionic compound with an anion. And you should memorize these. These ones, when you're say, you say the names of these cations, you're not allowed to use Roman numerals when you write the names. So um, it's pretty easy, though. Everything in that, that are, is an alkali metal, the first column, has a plus one charge when it's in an ionic compound. Everything in the second column, the alkaline earth metals, has a plus three. Over here, 3A, right? Aluminum and gallium have, have a plus three. Now, these one, two, three, four transition elements, um, you just memorize them. Scandium is plus three, zinc and cadmium are plus two, and silver is plus one. So memorize the charges on these cations because these are the ones that you are not allowed to use Roman numerals for. Now, anions, we're going to see in a moment. These anions over here, um, you just have to memorize what their charges are uh, when they're in ionic compounds. So <clears throat> to say the name of a monatomic anion, so uh, monatomic means single atom, anion mean has, means it has a negative charge. All you do is you say the name of the, the element, the root name of the element, 
but you change the ending to IDE. So, for instance, this anion here, monatomic anion, oxygen with a two negative charge, comes from oxygen. So what you do is you take oxygen and you replace its ending with IDE and it becomes oxide. So we have fluoride, chloride, bromide, oxide, sulfide, phosphide, telluride, what have you. Okay, now how to name ionic compounds. Well, <clears throat> first of all, what an ionic compound is. An ionic compound consists of a cation, which is always written first in the formula and the name, and an anion, which is always written second in the formula and the name. For example, sodium and bromine form an ionic compound. You know that sodium is a cation because it's a it's on it's an, a single element and it's to the left of the staircase, so it's a metal, it forms a cation. And bromine um, is to the right of the staircase here, there, and it forms an anion. So you have a cation and an anion. So to say the name of this, we just say the name of the cation and the name of the anion. That's how you name an ionic compound. It's really easy. Now that you know how to name monatomic cations and monatomic anions, you know how to name, oh, a lot of the or, um, um, ionic compounds. So sodium and bromine, the name for the sodium cation is just sodium. Remember, no Roman numerals because it's one of those ones I showed you. And bromine, when it becomes an anion, is called bromide. So we just call this stuff sodium bromide. Now, there are polyatomic ions. Some ionic compounds contain polyatomic ions. Poly means many, you know, uh, more than one, two or more atoms. And ions mean they have charges. Most of these, if you look at these, have negative charges. They're mostly all anions. There's only two in this table anyway that are cations. The first and most important thing here is start memorizing this table. You, the important things from here are the formulas, the charges, and the names. Now let's look at this first one here. This is a kind of a special case, mercury one. Okay, most, okay, this is the one element that when it forms a cation, forms a diatomic cation. So mercury two, just looks like we would normally think mercury with a positive two charge. That's mercury two. But mercury one is not what you would think originally. That is just mercury with a plus one charge, but rather two of them combine each with a plus one charge to make a total of two positive charges. So make sure you can distinguish between mercury two and mercury one. Oops, let me fix this here. It's not just mercury, it's mercury two. So memorize this table. And also add these eight to the table. And memorize these also. So we have this compound and we'd like to name it. First of all, it starts out with iron, which is a metal. When it's in a, a compound, it's going to be a cation. And it has this right here. This is one of the reasons why it's important to actually start memorizing these polyatomic ions is that you have to recognize them as polyatomic ions. So see this one here, Cr2O7 with a negative two charge? That's called dichromate. So once you start recognizing that, you'll see in the formula, ah, I recognize Cr2O7, and I know that it has a negative two charge, and its name is dichromate. Now the cation is going to be iron, but it is not one of those ones that I said you're not allowed to use Roman numerals for, so it has to have a Roman numeral to say what its charge is. And what that means is that it could have more than one uh, positive charge, you know, positive two, positive three, what have you. So how do you know what Roman numeral to use when you're saying the name? Well, you get that from the formula, charge neutrality. In this compound here, there is no overall charge, no total charge. And that means that the positive charges from the cation and the negative charges from the anion have to balance. We have to have the same number of each. Well, from dichromate, we know there's only one dichromate polyatomic ion, and it has a negative two charge, which means we have to have a total of two positive charges from our cation. Well, there's only one iron atom. That means it has to have a positive two charge. And so its name is iron two, and the name of this whole compound is iron two 
dichromate. Now, capitalization, we, we only capitalize the names of compounds if it's the first word in a sentence. Otherwise, it's lowercase. Now, let's go the other way, from the name to the formula. Calcium phosphate. Well, when, kind of when I look at this, I see phosphate. I know that's one of the polyatomic ions because I've memorized them. And that tells me, okay, I know this is an anion. Calcium is a metal. When it's combined with an anion, it must be a cation. Well, calcium is one of the ones that I showed you that is not allowed to have a Roman numeral, which means it only has one charge. What's that charge? It's a plus two. It's an alkaline earth metal. Phosphate from the table of polyatomic ions is PO4 and it has a negative three charge. Now to write the formula, we have to make sure all the positive charges and negative charges balance out. A quick way to do that is to just take these superscripts here, see the three from the phosphate with the negative three, not the charge, just the number, and write it as a subscript for the other element, and this too as a subscript for the phosphate. And you get this, calcium with a subscript three. Now, whenever you put a subscript like this two outside of a polyatomic ion, you must, absolutely must, put parentheses around it. Otherwise, it looks like it's 42 oxygens or some nonsense like that.